I am here today to bring you the four travel transfer partners that share relationships with the big four credit card issuers. Welcome back to my dad's channel. If you're new here, make sure to click that like button and subscribe and don't forget to share. It's me, Chad here, and welcome back to the channel. And I decided that I wanted to make this video because as of recently, I've been really into points redemption. I've been watching a lot of videos, doing some research, checking out some other content creators. And the fact of the matter is, every every card issuer has their set of travel partners. But in this video, what I've done is I've focused on the big four, being Amex, Chase, Capital One, and I decided at the last moment to include City, even though they really don't put the travel partner aspect forward as a big selling point in their cards. So with that being considered, I still included them because we have a lot of people still getting into the game. We have some people who are carving out their own credit card strategies, and that includes a very wide array of cards that people may pick up. But thinking about if they're gonna be team travel, how are they gonna leverage these points? How are they gonna transfer them? So what I've done here is I look through and these four travel partners that I'm gonna name for you, I feel are the easiest ones to stockpile points for great aspirational trips as they share relationships with all four of the major issuers that most people get credit cards for, you know, for their sign up bonuses and their transferable currencies. Now, given the timing of this video, I know everybody's talking about everything else like the Cash Plus Rewards card that was just offered by US Bank, the new benefits and perks of the Amex Platinum card, and that is all well and good. I still have the Platinum series and I will update it, but the reason I am doing this is because now it's November, we're coming into Thanksgiving, we're coming into Christmas, there will be some travel here, and for my US-based people, mainly it's gonna be domestic. For the most part, your vacation destinations your aspirational travel destinations this is their off season so maybe you might have some empty nesters and some you know late bloomers going there but for the most part this is when things are their cheapest and most people are home they're doing their holiday shopping they're signing up for new cards and new sign up bonuses so that way they're not burning their points they're totally in an earning cycle. And then everybody's preparing for spring, spring break, for summer. And that is when the peak travel season will be there. But you need your stockpile of points in order to transfer them and get your awesome point redemptions, or maybe your not so awesome point redemptions. But either way, you'll be able to travel with what you build up now during the off season. So now in addition to the four travel partners, which I'm gonna get to, I'm, I know, I know, I'm gonna give you some honorable mentions that are at least able to share three relationships with the major issuers so they could be some great fallbacks for you. So the very first travel partner on the list is going to be Air France slash KLM. Now, normally most of these airlines are referred together as they are partner airlines and they are a part of the Sky Team Alliance. Now, the name of their program is Flying Blue. You will get your Flying Blue miles. You can earn those, you can transfer those from Amex, Chase, Capital One, or City as you build them through your credit card journey. The next travel partner on the list is yet another Sky Team member, and that's Virgin Atlantic. Virgin Atlantic's program is called Virgin Flying Club. Now, they are available on all the major carriers, and as a matter of fact, as of this filming, right now, November 7th, there's a 30% sale on the Chase Travel Portal if you wanna go ahead and transfer over some Virgin Miles and maybe book a trip going out. So you might wanna keep that in mind. Remember, as of right now, November 7th, this filming, there is a 30% sale. The next travel partner on the list is a part of the Star Alliance, and that partner is Singapore Airlines with their Chris Flyer Miles program. Now, Singapore is a great way to book United flights, as they are, you know, alliance partners. And also Singapore's business class offering is nothing to sneeze at. It's very good. I've seen a lot of great things about it. And you can go to both Europe and Asia with it. So that is another one to keep in mind as they are available on all major credit card issuers. 
And finally, the last travel partner is Emirates. Emirates is available through all credit card issuers. Emirates is a non-alliance airline, but they do have partner airlines that they do partner with, such as JetBlue, where you can actually fly other airlines and elect to earn Emirates Skywards miles. That is the name of their program is Skywards. And Emirates is world famous for their first class offering and even their business class offering, which is fantastic. This is a Middle East based airline that is synonymous with luxury. And I don't, I don't even know what else to say because if you're watching this, chances are you have heard of Emirates or at least it is a goal for you to fly on Emirates. So that is the last one. So with all four of these, understand that they have relationships with all of the major credit card carriers. So if you have a card here and a card there and a card here, don't worry about it. You're doing your holiday shopping. You can go ahead and link your accounts and you can actually ball up all the points and maybe it will even accelerate you into being able to take that once in a lifetime trip. So now for the honorable mentions. For the most part, we just have a few airlines that are either not in the Chase system or not in the Capital One system. So let's start with the airlines that are not in the Chase system. So now with three or four relationships, and unfortunately they're not in Chase, we have Etihad, which is literally another Middle East lap of luxury airline that is world famous. Unfortunately, they have relationships with three. They just don't happen to be in Chase. But hey, you win some, you lose some. So just understand that if you have cards that and you don't have chase because you didn't start at the beginning, observing the 524 rule, like, you know, some people, hey, maybe you can still do something with Etihad. Another great honorable mention is Avianca, and they use the Life Miles program. Now with this, a lot of people use this in order to take Lufthansa first class flights to Europe and back and if you've seen Lufthansa first class and the first class lounge flying in a 747, you have a chance of actually sitting ahead of the pilot in their world famous first class product. That is, I mean, that's one of the definitions of the phrase once in a lifetime. Now, Avianca does not share a relationship with Chase, but shares a relationship with all three of the other major card issuers. Now, the final program, which does not share a relationship with Chase, is actually Cathay Pacific. Now, Cathay Pacific uses a currency called Asia Miles that everyone else uses. And I have heard that the Cathay Pacific, I've actually seen its first class offering, and it is out of this world. Uh, it's mainly going to be for Asia travel, coming off the West Coast, going through Canada, and you can get to a couple of major points over on the other side of the Pacific, but it's definitely one to keep in mind, especially if you have a city of Capital One or an Amex card. Now, for the carriers that are not in the Capital One system, but are in everyone else, the very first one is actually a very well-known carrier, and that is JetBlue and their True Blue program. JetBlue started in 1999 in New York, and I remember when JetBlue first started, they were doing things nobody else was doing. Everybody got TV. Then, you know, all the big guys glommed off of that. You didn't have to pay for carry-ons. It was just an awesome, awesome air discount airline. And actually booking online with them was ridiculously easy. And now JetBlue is a very major player in the Northeast and they have major hubs going up and down the Eastern seaboard. But unfortunately, for the purposes of this video, they actually do not share a relationship with Capital One, but they do share a relationship with the other three credit card issuers. So you definitely want to keep them in mind if you don't have a Venture or a Venture X, but you may have other cards. And also as an aside, with JetBlue, they have been known to have, you know, disparate transfer ratios, except if you have the City Prestige, which is a one-to-one, -one, or you are with Chase, which is one-to-one. -one. Now with American Express, 250 Amex points only equals 200 JetBlue points. So you want to go ahead and keep that in mind. And 
In addition to that, one last thing with JetBlue being a US-based carrier, when you redeem through Amex, you're gonna pay that American tax everybody talks about. I'm not even gonna lie to you, I didn't even research it because I promise you I would take a submarine from here to Cuba made out of cheesecloth before I ever pay extra in order to pay less. Now the last airline, which is gonna be an honorable mention, they do not share a relationship with Capital One, is Australia's flagship carrier, Qantas. Qantas actually shares a relationship with the other three. Now, I haven't done a lot of research into doing redemptions with them. Um, I've actually seen them done though, so it's not impossible. They do have some tra you know, transfer partners that you can use, but I just wanted to lay that out for them because they still are three out of four and hey, it's Australia. I mean, I'm not going because I don't do spiders. So, you know, that's just, that's just gonna be a no bueno for me. As a matter of fact, if I fly there, we can just fly around the country just in case a web comes up, but that's not really my thing. But Qantas is gonna be our last one and those are our honorable mentions. So just wanna wrap up just to let you know, you don't always have to have the trifecta. You might not be where other people are with 20 cards or 10 cards or just the cards of a certain issue or stable, but you can still stockpile points, get them ready in the off season. So that way, when it's summer, when it's warm, when you wanna hit these destinations in peak season, you will have plenty of points. So that way you can just shoot them a couple of dollars on some tax, on some fuel surcharge, and you can travel just like everyone else travels. Well, not everyone else, just us smart people who use the credit card points off money that we're gonna spend anyway, because why not get a return off money you're gonna spend anyway? I don't know, I'm not, you know, the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I've been known to nick a person or two. So, thank you so much for joining me for this video. I hope you stuck around to the end. As always, I totally appreciate you. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. I need those comments. Maybe I missed something, I don't think I did. But if you have any input, I've been getting some great feedback and some great data points from commenters on the channel and I'm loving it. I really am and I just want you to know that I appreciate you. We're almost at 900, we're speeding our way to that 1K mark and then, you know, we're just, we're just gonna keep grinding it out from there. But once again, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. And until next time, I'll see you later.